2012 Jeep Wrangler check engine light yet again. Let's see what we got. P0128 coolant thermostat coolant temperature below thermostat regulating temperature okay so I looked this up already and that tells us that maybe the thermostat is stuck open so the coolant is being cooled too quickly early on um, the engine needs to get up to temperature fairly quickly and so that's why the uh, the ECU is reporting this problem um, if the engine doesn't get up to temperature too quickly early on apparently you just get poor uh, gas mileage um, and everything doesn't really run as well as it should um, obviously there's no risk of overheating if it's stuck open uh, so what I did was I um, drove this around for quite a while and I recorded some of the coolant temperatures and sure enough the temperature just really didn't get up um, as quickly as it should and I drove it around for 10 15 plus minutes highway speeds local driving um, stop start traffic type of stuff and I just really couldn't get the temperature into that operating range of 205 to 215 um, it really just kind of um, stayed in that like low low range I'll put the you'll see the numbers on screen um, and so I think it's basically because it needs a new thermostat. Got a new thermostat, Rock Auto. Uh, the thermostat is built into the housing. So, I mean, while it's probably possible to replace just the thermostat itself, um, I don't know. Let's get the whole new housing, I guess. Um, let's get this swapped out. Took the cover off. The thermostat is located, can you see it? Right there, uh, is that top bolt. So I'm going to remove the air intake uh, to give us more access, um, and then we'll be able to unbolt it. draining some coolant so that way when I remove the hose off the thermostat I don't make too much of a mess. The radiator has a little valve on the lower left side if you're facing the front of the car here um, that you need to turn counterclockwise to open. It's a little bit sticky or at least for me it was and it was kind of hard to get my hand in there because of this bumper was in the way but after working it back and forth a little bit I finally got it open and so now I'm letting some of the coolant drain. I just need the coolant to go about halfway down the radiator um, because that's where this hose is attached. And so hopefully that will minimize spilling. I'll do my best. Now that I've drained some coolant, I'm gonna try and remove this upper radiator hose from the thermostat housing. Uh, spring clamp. How do I do this with two hands? All right, I got the clamp moved down. I have a little bit of a tray down there. Can't really get the bucket down there. I don't have anything else. Now, if this does start to spew a lot, I'm just going to pull the hose up higher in the level. I don't know if that's going to help. Oh, 
right into my little pan. I hope that's still, and the pan just fell. All right, get the hose back on. I got a smaller bucket down there and uh, there was like a drop of fluid left. So, coolant left, so. All right, well, the hose is removed. Now we're going to use 10 millimeter socket and get rid of the two bolts here. And then the housing comes right off. All right, here we go. That's what the bucket's for. Just caught those screws. <laughs> um, okay, and now still on here, there's a bit of a, uh, I think this is the rubber O-ring from, yeah, you can see that the O-ring is missing. And so it is attached still to this uh, housing. stuck so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some uh, Brillo or scotch Brite and just clean up this surface so that way it has a clean um, a clean mating edge for the new o-ring all right so I'm just gonna snug these bolts in they don't take a lot of force I think it's like a hundred inch pounds of force which is what less than 10 foot pounds so i'm just going to use my socket wrench and snug it up a little bit and then i'm going to move the clamp back put the air cleaner back on topped up the coolant and now i'm going to run the engine a little bit um, i did also bleed the thermostat housing i will probably end up doing it again um, and i'll show that uh, but basically i want to make sure i get some of the air out so i'm going to let it Get up to temp, see how that works out. I cleared the engine code. I have it idling. And I'm watching the temperature uh, slowly start to rise. So I'm going to wait until it gets to 195, 200. Hopefully that opens the thermostat. Um, also, I don't know if you can hear that, but I do hear some bubbling and gurgling, which tells me there's still air in the system. Uh, so I may actually, um, actually I might turn the car off and let it cool a little bit and then try adding more coolant or try bleeding it again. Um, but basically I'll be doing that back and forth and I'll be keeping an eye on the temperature. Temperature's climbing, 190. Jeep is definitely getting up to temperature much quicker than it was with the older thermostat. So already that's a good sign. The check engine light has not come back on. Um, also a good sign. So I'm going to turn the Jeep off, let it cool down completely, then check the radiator coolant level. While this is cooling, I um, want to open the bleeder valve, and uh, I don't have a 90 degree Phillips head. I thought I did. Um, so I just kind of use pliers to just gently open this. And be mindful, this might still be warm. Oh yeah, a little steamage. Okay, but it definitely spewed out some some hot air so it's just still a bit hot oh yeah just gonna close it back up
Let it keep cool. Let it keep cooling down. All right, uh, just took it for a spin after filling it up, topping it off with coolant. And we peaked at 226 Fahrenheit. Um, temperature was right within the operating zone, which is great. It was going up and down, um, no problems. Check engine light did not come back on, which is awesome. I can fix it, so can you.